All right, we are here. I'm joined by Mike, who has been doing some casting with us for the last few weeks now. We're in a 1v1 tournament between two of LTU's uh, student org players. We have uh, Logan and Mark. So we can see both of their two main champions uh, locked in here, which is Irelia and Echo. Yeah, this is going to be a very interesting 1v1 tournament. Irelia, uh, she is extremely strong in the early game. You have to respect her passive so much. If she's able to get her five passive stacks up in this in these fights here, she's going to dominate any 1v1 matchup pretty much uh, into the early game. Whereas Echo, he, he really kind of scales in the later later games, although he does have a lot of early game burst damage if you don't respect that. So it's definitely going to be an interesting uh, skirmish this year. Yep, looks like we might be having some uh, technical difficulties on the players and um, let's see if we can fix that. But yeah, uh, I'm I'm excited to see what happens here. These are these are their main champions. They play these champions a lot. Um, Mark really known for Zyrelia, and for those of you who don't know, Logan used to be a mid laner for the club team, but now he switched over to ADC, and I think he has. Uh, over a million mastery points over on Echo. So I'm uh, going to be excited to see how his mastery of the champion comes in. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ton, a huge mastery difference there. I'm not sure. Is this the, this is their main accounts, correct? Yes, this is their main accounts. Wow. About, was that a quarter? All right. We're back. A little bit of technical difficulties going in. Uh, we all know and love the right client, but... Uh, again, we have Mark versus Logan with Echo and Irelia. Yeah, this is going to be a, a very interesting matchup, like I was saying before. And look, taking a look at the runes, we have Electrocute versus PTA. So both of these things, uh, that the PTA is going to favor Irelia if she's able to get those extended fights along with her passive as well. She's going to be able to keep stacking that up in, in the minion waves and as well as uh, keeping those stacks active in a long fight while PTA is continually ramping up her damage more and more versus electrocute is the exact opposite. Echo is going to want to get in. He's going to want to get a short uh, e EQ or sorry, QE auto trades and then back out. He, if he gets stuck into a long extended fight, if he gets Irelia ulted, if he gets Irelia stunned, he's going to be in for a world of hurt, especially in his early game, especially in the early game, pre-level six. So he has to be very careful as, uh, we are going to get into this here. And then he's even still in base for the first wave, looks like. I think he TC'd. Oh, boy. <laughs> Apparently he got back in. Oh, my okay. God. So many. The, the stream went flawlessly into now. And then once we use, you know, add in one more element, apparently it goes all, uh, <laughs> all downhill. But, um, yeah. Uh, so I to see what happens. What are, what are your predictions for this early? Who Who's going to take it? Who's going to win? Uh, I, I personally believe the Irelia is going to pull through and win, although we'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to see with the, with the mastery point difference. A, a good Echo can do a lot of damage, especially in the early game, if he knows how to respect the early levels. Uh, looks so, like we're going to see a little bit of a, a little, little bit of um, respect here. You know, fair play, not, not getting experience from the Irelia as we're waiting for Echo to get back in the lane. I'm curious. What do you think about the, the refillable? I mean... I don't know. I feel like you should have went deep blade, maybe. I mean, the refillable can be strong, too. You know, is I'll backing allowed in this challenge? No, no, no backing. So that's that. Yeah, that's interesting for sure. I really don't can have a lot of mana problems as she's trying to stack up waves with her Q. But typically, you know, again, that's going to be happening in these extended fights. Oh, she started E even. Okay. Oh, uh, that's interesting. I mean, uh, I I think it's the right play. Maybe you know, you hit level two first. And then you have the E, and then you can, like, double Q. Because I think in the 1v1, W is kind of like, eh, really? Like, especially with the audio resets. But I think that that's just my idea of uh, why he went E first. Okay, yeah. We're, right, and we're just seeing a bunch of, bit of performing up here. Uh, as far as that goes, I think I would have liked to see the Q first to try and get a little bit of a first wave cheese. If he was able to poke out the Echo on the, under that first wave, you know, provided there's no disconnect there. He could have done a lot of damage and put him in a really precarious spot, especially with only the, the two potion start versus his refillable. Plus, looks like he's got biscuits as well. So he's going to be looking to stay in this lane alive for as long as possible. Yeah, looks like they're just farming up. I expect that to see a lot bloodier of an early game, but I'm thinking maybe they're just going to hit six as we have a play going on. Yeah, 
e Echo is able to get a great trade off getting the stun with his W onto Irelia. This is what I was talking about. Oh, there's the stun. Oh, oh, counter stun going in. Shot. Taking a tower shot, though. That could be the difference there. But oh. flashing in. Both players going down to the ignite last second. But it looks like... I really went down first, so that's going to be a win for Logan. Yep. All right, we are back. This is going to be the second game of the quote-unquote semifinals. We're having Brezza versus uh, Vex. Um, I'm excited to see this. Volley Bear versus Lucian. I think Lucian definitely has the edge, but what do you think, Mike? Yeah, no, uh, any range ma range into melee matchup is definitely going to be favored, uh, absolutely. And Lucian, we know it can, can be played in these tops and middle lanes because of how much mobility he has. If Volibear tries to run at him, he's going to dash away. So long as he's not using that dash forward aggressively, unless Volibear is very low HP, this should be a pretty easy lane for Lucian, I would think. Yep, I'm excited to see it. We're going to, I mean, we don't have to wait out the spectator delay. We just got to wait out a few seconds for the, you know, the last four seconds for the... Uh client and then we'll get into the loading screen but yeah uh really excited to see what's going to happen here uh i personally volley bear, out of volley bear illusion i like volley bear he's one of my top three highest mastery points champion <laughs> you know i played volley bear back in season five really you know trick 2g fanboy for those who've been following league of legends for a long time so uh udir and volley bear are my top i think udir is my number one then it's volley bear then it's Darius. But, uh, ooh, what do you think about the uh, summoners for Lucian? Yeah, so th that's what I was talking about. You are going to have the flash advantage in the early game uh, for the Volley Bear. However, the exhaust is going to come in a huge play. He's going to catch the Volley Bear, I suspect, uh, very off guard. He's going to be trying to look click, click, click the flash in and then finish off the Lucian. I think he's going to get hit by an exhaust and lose all of his damage. So it can be very dangerous, especially if uh, Bruza here is able to hold on to Lucian's dash and only use it defensively. He doesn't really need the flash, especially into this matchup where there's not a great gr uh, gap closing ability already onto the Volley Bear pre level six. All right. Real question is Dorn's ring start on Volley Bear. <laughs> yeah, so so Volley Bear actually has a lot of AP scalings in his kit. If you're not trying to be building him for the late game, trying to become the super tank for your team. AP Volibear can do a ton of damage, especially for if you're not uh, respecting it. So I think that's a great start. It's going to scale up with his E. It's going to do a little bit extra damage for him. Going to give him a little bit bigger of his shield, which is gonna, definitely going to help in the, the 1v1 aspect we got going on here. <laughs> a little bit of dancing going on in the mid lane. Players having a bit of fun as they wait for creeps to flow in. But yeah, no, I, I, I think this is great. I like both these builds. Uh, it's, it's definitely oh, going to be a card. Oh, <laughs> turret shot. Throws out the disrespect. Yeah, so he, quick he, question. He knows that range. Quick question yeah. in chat was posed if, if Emilio's playing tonight. So for the GG League game, I think the starting roster for the first game is going to be definitely Mark Top, Brazza Jungle. I guess I'm saying they're like League games. Uh, the Spanish Prodigy Top, Brazza Jungle, uh, Tempest Natsu Mid, um, Kendrick Lamar, who is Logan ADC. And then for support, we're probably going to have William uh, support, and then we're going to swap it up for the second game. We already see both the Flash and Ignite coming out from the Volley Bear. He dove on to Bruza, just trying to get a little bit of damage onto that onto his Lucian here. With yeah, the, honestly, both those summoners down, it's going to be very hard for Volley Bear to get a, a, a kill off. And look, the HP is already pretty much equalized. Volley Bear is going to have a little bit of extra healing because he's got two potions versus the one. Uh, although Bruza can be able to safely farm up at a distance and just regen that health over time with his uh, lifesteal from the Doran's Blade. Oh, yeah. So, I honestly think this is favored. I mean, how he doesn't have Ignite, but I think it's favored. If Volley Bear can land Q, E, W, and a trade, that's going to be huge. And then after that, just try to get an all in. I think it could actually be really, really good for the Volley Bear. So, uh, going to have yeah. to watch out for that. And see, that, that that is the trade that I was talking about. As soon as Volley Bear drops on all fours and starts running at the Lucian, Lucian just going to back off. He's going to press E, dash backwards, say, no, actually, I'm just quite a little bit out of your range. He just has to play back and keep his distance. If he's able to manage the distance and keep that spacing a constant, there's no way without Flash that this Volley Bear is going to be able to get on top of him. Or pre-level 6 as well. Oh, this might be a dead Volley Bear here. Yep, there's uh, the Ignite coming through and finishing him off easy with a little bit of extra PTA damage. 
Yep. Yep. And that is going to be the sec or the second game of the semis, and we're going to go over to the finals. I think we do have time for a best of three for the finals, which is going to be Logan versus um, Brezza. All right, all right, we are back. Finals of this short little one v one tournament between uh, the LTU club members, but we do have a signature champion for Enrique, um, and that's the Lee Sin. Thoughts? Yeah, the Lee Sin is definitely going to be very interesting here. Now, again, so Pantheon, I think, is actually favored into the the all in and into melee matchups. So this is going to be very hard for Bruce Lee Sin to stay alive if Pantheon is able to all in him and get a nice stun followed up by uh, his his E he can do a ton of damage. Especially, I assume they're going to be taking PTA uh, at least onto the Pantheon side. We'll see what Keystone uh, Enrique goes for here. That's going to matter a lot into these one v ones with the electrocute. Okay, oh my and God, I do like it. Like, look at their uh, look at their their you know their summoners. their summoners. They got the same runes. The, this ooh, look even almost the same mastery points both at th almost you know a little <laughs> bit more than 300k so uh they're seasoned on these champions yeah absolutely and I, I really do like the we saw how well the exhaust ignite worked in that last game and neither one of these champions have mobility issues lee sin we know can get all around the lane if he wants to with his between his ward hops his q dashing uh, eventually, if we, if we do see this getting to level six, he can you know he can kick someone across, follow him right back up after. And Pantheon, a lot of the same way with with his uh, jumping on the champions and stunning them, like he does not need the flash to be able to get on top of this Lee Sin, especially as these are both melee champions. They're going to be in very close proximity, trying to get that CS and trying to stay uh, e equal in that far as the as we go on here. So yeah, this is going to be very close. And I really do like the Electrocute as well. They're going to have so much burst damage. Neither one of these champions, are, neither one of these players here, are going to know uh, their champion is going to want to get stuck uh, in a long skirmish. The, the PTA is not going to get proc against the Lee Sin. So I really respect the Pantheon's choice here of taking the Electrocute, just trying to get a little bit more burst damage as the Lee Sin is going to want to jump away as soon as Pantheon initiates it. All right, we are back. More technical difficulties on our end. But... Uh, we have to switch out Logan for Mark, so we're going to have Mark versus Enrique with the Irelia versus Raven matchup. All right, yeah, this is definitely gonna be interesting. We see the, uh, the 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 armor being broken there off of uh, the Riven already. That that's going to be a very interesting. This since that that rune there has such a long cooldown on it that uh, she's not going to be able to have that in a lot of a lot of the skirmishes and a lot of the fights, especially. If he really is able to poke them out, and we see a couple of backs going down. Yep. So that um the the bone playing, like you said, is uh, really strong. So uh, maybe that's potentially some of the strategy behind you know the Irelia. You, know, you go in, you get the E, you get the stun, you get the bone plating, and that's a huge advantage because bone plating can reduce like probably a hundred damage, and in a one v one scenario, that can like that. That can be a lot. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so we're going to have to see uh, if the Aurelia is able to play around that. I'm sure she'll be able to proc it very easily, uh, especially with how aggressive it looks like Bruza is trying to be. If you see the E starting again from the Irelia, so she is actually going to be a little bit weaker on this level one compared to the Riven here. So she's going to have to be very careful and she's not going to be able to get very easy stacks. And there's that bone putting down again for that Riven. Yep. So um, I kind of favor Riven because Riven as a as a one v one champion, you know, you can disrupt the Irelia Q. If you interrupt that and she doesn't get the reset, that's potentially a huge amount of damage that uh, Irelia is not gonna have. As uh, looks like the Riven's making a little bit of a mistake. Is you know already down to what is that a quarter HP? Yeah, so that is the power of the PTA plus the passive coming out from that Irelia. She's able to get so much early game damage, especially if she's able to land a stun. And she didn't have her passive stacked up all that much that at that point. And she nearly uh, killed the, the Riven. Now we do see the Ignite down on the Irelia, still up for the Riven, although Riven does not have her flash. So uh, if the Riven does not is not able to heal up here, are using both of her refillable potions versus still we still have uh, a a potion uh, over on the refillable side for the, or sorry, the corrupting side for the Irelia, um, as well as Biscuits that are coming through over time. Irelia is going to stay very healthy. 
Uh, Bruce is going to have to look to be very careful not getting poked out in his lane and try and regen some health naturally. All getting a great stun and knock up under the tower, taking two tower shots as well as a full combo from the Riven, evening out the HP difference. Although we are going to get, like I said, still, we still have these potions ticking on the Aurelia. She's going to heal some of that damage back up. Yeah, so I was going to say the Riven could like all in and kill the Aurelia because Riven still has Ignite. Yeah, yeah, you just have to be very careful, and you have to watch the PTA there. If if the PTA uh, is propped against the Riven as well as a stun goes down, she's going to take a lot of damage. It's going to be very dangerous. Yeah, but I think we're going to potentially see all in here. Bo, both of them looking like for the perfect opportunity to go in. Looks like it's going to be Riven. Oh, there's a stun, and yep, the Riven takes the kill. First blood going to Bruza.